Welcome to another edition of TransLogic. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer, and that is Caitlin Thompson. Thank you, Bradley. Coming up, we'll look at a hot new personal transportation device that's been tearing up the interwebs and decide if it's here to stay or if it's going to go the way of the Segway. And we're going to be seeing part one of our behind-the-scenes tour of Honda's American Research and Development Laboratory. But first, it's time for the TransLogic World Report. Let's take a look at the Ferrari 599 Hikers Hybrid Concept. The KERS part stands for Kinetic Energy Recovery System, which is a complicated way to say regenerative braking. Using technology they developed for their Formula One team, the Hiker system, which weighs just under 90 pounds, will produce an extra 100 horsepower by sending back energy that was stored during braking. The car can even operate as a full electric when you're just slowly cruising around. Oh, and as a side note, Ferrari just unveiled in Beijing their new 599 GTO, which will churn out in 670 horses, go 0 to 60 in 3.35 seconds, and hit 208 miles per hour, making it the fastest road car Ferrari has ever built. Now, if you're lucky enough to actually be in the market for either one of those cars, you might also want to check out this design from Belgian yacht makers Emotion. If built, it would become the world's largest private vessel and come equipped with a drive-in garage, two-day boats, a helipad and hangar, swimming pool, nightclub, casino and games room, a two-level cinema, three beach clubs with a health spa, 10 VIP rooms, 22 guest suites, and an owner's deck. Uh, that's just <laughs> ridiculous. This project is simply a design at this point, but all this could be yours if you have an extra 500 to $900 million to spare. That's it for the World Report. Well, it's time again to play our favorite game when we decide if a new concept or innovation is for the win or leaves us wondering, what the F? That's good. Thanks. <laughs> now this week, we're going to be looking at a new transportation device that's only available to those overseas, the Yike Bike. This plug-in electric Yike Bike goes about 15 miles per hour, has a six mile range on a 40 minute charge, and it folds up in under 20 seconds, making it totally portable. It's not that expensive either, is it? No, it's expected to cost about four grand. So, okay. Bradley, what do you think about the Yike Bike? I don't know. I mean, I, I think the Yike Bike's a cool idea, but it's got its shortcomings, especially for the American market. It's limited six mile range, kind of makes it a little impossible for a lot of people to use on their daily commute. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, a lot of cities don't really have decent public transportation here. Even in a city like New York, I bet in the snow, it just would be crap. I mean, yeah. I don't know. And, and it looks a little hard to ride. Yeah, it does. Cumbersome. And what if you had to carry something around like a bag or a laptop? Exactly, exactly. So that would be difficult. So all truth be told, the Yike Bike in theory, awesome. In reality, what the F? Times two. All right. That's it for FTW WTF. Now, for years now, Hondas have been some of the most reliable, affordable, and popular cars in the world, but you wouldn't exactly call them groundbreaking. Well, times are changing. Honda has begun to unveil some of the most interesting, innovative, but also feasible concepts around. Yep. I headed out to the research and development facility to see the future. I'm here with Dave Merrick. Dave, tell me your title here at Honda. I'm Division Director of Advanced Design. We do maybe two or three generations out. So what goes into creating a concept car? Quite a bit. Maybe there's a hole in the lineup, or maybe there's some issue that needs to be addressed. Honda, typically, we start with you, it, what is it for? What's the concept of that whole thing? And generally, it's a buyer. So if you were getting a car, you would say, OK, Dave, I want this in it, this in it, this in it. We would take that and create kind of a story about you and then say, OK, what does she need? What's her daily life like? And then come up with some kind of solution. What's the best vehicle that would fit you? In the changing times, there'll be no ICE in the future. ICE is internal combustion engine. In terms of the peanut or FC Sport, you don't have to give up your, the enthusiast automobile. You can have this really sporty, really aggressive, fun car that still is environmentally perfect. How many people would you say would work on a concept? Typically you get a few interior designers, a few exterior designers are sketching different proposals, not necessarily that. We'll pick a couple and do scale model. Could be anything from a clay model to a digital model. It doesn't matter to us so much. How much of a concept car typically makes it into the final product? It depends on the car. I mean, sometimes 10%, sometimes it's up, up to like 60% probably. For instance, the element. We went to the X Games and, and drew pictures on a wall saying, let's make this car for this surfer guy. 
That sketch that day was actually what the car became. The Insight was the first hybrid in America. Talking about how cars go from a concept to production, what was that process like? That GRX, we, we did that car knowing it was going to be a hybrid system. So that car went to Japan, became the JVX that was shown at the Tokyo Motor Show, and they took that car and made the Insight. Honda has such a range of vehicles that you get to do uh, something different every time. Thanks to Honda for showing me around. I had so much fun. Yeah, it looked like a blast. All right, that's all the time we have for today. I'm Bradley Hasmeyer. And I'm Caitlin Thompson. We'll see you again. Bye. Bye.